There's 104 days of self-isolation. Outdoor school has come along to save us. We'll still social distance, but with entertainment, there's so much for us to do now. Like maybe doing critter catch with fossil and bumble, or cleaning up your messy room. Different experiments with potato, or wilderness first day with trillium. Learning things with fruit about animals or measuring stuff with marmot. Fascinating. Learning to plant with lich. Plant facts with morning glory and obviously camp songs too. This rocks. As you can see, there's a whole lot of stuff to do. Outdoor school is so much fun. Come on, Boulder. Go stick with us. It's the Creekside staff. Creekside staff are making a title sequence. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Outdoor School at Home. My name is Bumble, and I am virtually joined here today with my good friend, Fossil. Hi, I'm Fossil. Today's activity is going to be a critter catch. For this critter catch, you're going to need to either find some critters hanging out at your home and or take a walk through your neighborhood or a local park and find some critters out there. Uh, while you're out finding all of your critters, make sure you're taking some notes or some pictures of these critters that you're finding. So we're going to give you some information about that. And you also want to make sure that you're giving all your critters a name. And if they already have a name, give them a new name. And once we have all this information at the end of the video, we're going to do something cool with it. Let's get started. Alrighty everyone, now depending on where you go to do your critter catch, I'm here at the Rock Creek Environmental Studies Center uh, and they've got cows on their campus. So we've got some fun cows and it looks like some calves as well. We've got some little babies wandering around. Now this lady is making sounds at me, so we're going to keep going and try and find some newts. Meet Greg! <laughs> Greg is my friend, the rough-skinned newt, and he is our next critter for this awesome critter catch. So, Greg and friends like Greg like to live in nice, forested, moist areas with a water source nearby. There is a swamp that away. Uh, so, these guys are hanging out. We've actually found like four or five newts popping around, uh, chillaxing like villains chilling like villains over here in this wooded area. Uh, rough skinned newts are native to the Pacific Northwest. They live all along the coastline from California up to Washington. Uh, and these guys are super cool. They live in the forested area as adults and during the spring and the fall, they'll migrate back to the water to reproduce. The females lay their eggs on little aquatic plants living in the water. And then once those eggs hatch and our newts, like this guy Greg here, develop, they will head on up into the forest and live out their adult lives up there. Um, newts are also super cool because their skin produces a neurotoxin called tetradoxin. Uh, and when eaten, the toxin goes into effect. So uh, holding on to these guys really isn't going to do much. Um, if you have super sensitive skin, you might feel some sort of irritation, um, but really they're not going to do much uh, toxin wise just hold on to them just want to make sure you're not licking your newts and once you've put your newt back into the wild you've given it a name and released it you're gonna want to make sure you're washing your hands uh, don't want to get those toxins in your food or your face because that wouldn't be fun uh, but yeah this is Greg he's super cool you also want to make sure that you're not holding on to your newts for too long. They do have really sensitive skin. So uh, you want to make sure you can hold on to them, pick them up, take them a look. Uh, look at their nice brown reddish top. And if you take a look really carefully, you can see their super bright orange underneath. And then release your super cool newts back into the wild. Crikey, mate, there's so many trilliums out here in the forest. Look at this beautiful creature. Isn't she just a beaut? She's gorgeous. Alrighty friends, so for this critter catch, we're going to be looking for some worms. Now you could do this in your backyard, maybe have a patch of grass outside. I for one do not have a backyard, so I'm out here in this lovely little nature area near where I live. Uh, and I've got this nice patch of dirt right here I'm going to dig into to try to find some worms. So what you're going to need for this is a shovel. I'm going to use a fancy stick. Uh, and a little container to put your worm friends in. I have this little clear lid container. I'm just going to put my little worm friends in. So I'm going to go ahead and dig around in this little patch of dirt. Oh, wow, right off the bat, there we are. Nice little worm guy. So I'm going to stick him right in here. 
once you have your worm, you can take one, you can look for a couple maybe, and you can go ahead and take a look at them. My little worm guy's all shriveled up here. Don't know what he's doing, but that's okay. Now, worms are super cool. There are about 200, 2,700 different types of worms on Earth. Uh, and this is the classic earthworm. The longest earthworm ever found was about 22 feet long. They found it in South Africa. That's super cool. Um, worms are a super cool thing called a decomposer. A decomposer is an animal or a plant or a fungus that helps to break down organic matter. And worms do this by eating organic matter and then pooping it out into nice uh, waste or dirt. It turns into dirt. Uh, another super cool thing about worms is that they do have a head end and a tail end. If you take a look at your worm, my guy here, he's got like a nice little pink end here and a nice little brown end. This little pink end here is his head. Now, funny thing about worms is that they don't actually have eyes or ears. Uh, the way that they see is by sensing light. Worms don't like the light, so if they're sensing light, they're going to dig in the opposite direction, into the dark, uh, and they hear by sensing vibrations. So this guy's probably feeling my vibrations right now, and that's how he, he's hearing me. Um, another cool thing about worms is that they actually have five hearts, and their five hearts are going to be up in that head end area, right where he's, so, ooh, <laughs> dropping him on the ground. <laughs> I'm bringing him back up. So worms have five hearts, um, and if you were to cut into that area, that is probably the only way that you'd be able to kill a worm. Uh, worms are able to heal and regrow themselves. So if you were to cut off this guy's tail, uh, he would be able to heal and regrow that tail and keep going. Super cool. I'm gonna put this guy back in the dirt over here, put the dirt back on top of him because we know he doesn't like the light. Let's kind of bury him up a little bit and let him go. Those are worms. Like I said earlier, worms like to hide in cool, dark places. So if I lift it on my backpack here, I might be able to find a worm! <laughs> Alrighty, everybody, so while you are out on your walks to the neighborhoods today, make sure you're looking around trying to find some cool birds that you might see. I've got one right over there. It's a black bird with orange wings. If you find a cool bird, try and take a picture of it or write down some key characteristics so when you get home you can try and identify the birds. You can also listen to their calls. If you listen really closely right now, you can hear a bunch of bird calls around me. In the case that you aren't able to go out and find wild animals outside, you might have the opportunity to uh, look at some pets from inside. Right here we have Cleo, who is my cat, and uh, she's going to be helping us learn a bit about predators. We'll start by looking at her ears which uh, are adapted to be able to move around. As you can see, she can move her ear back and forth. They're also got, they've also got uh, these uh, nice cone shapes that will capture any sound coming in and direct it towards her eardrum. Um, we can also notice that her whiskers are very soft. They're modified hairs that uh, have uh, sensory organs on them that will send that back to her brain. So when she's going through a small hole, she can tell exactly how wide it is by first using her whiskers. So she doesn't even have to see where she's going in order to know whether or not she'll fit. She also has retractable claws like all felines do. If uh, we press on her fingers, then uh, you'll see her claws pop out. Whereas with dogs, their claws are always uh, uh, popped out. This is an adaptation that uh, helps protect felines' claws from the outside world while they're not using them. Finally, I want to talk about her eyes. Cats have uh, eyes on the front of their head, like most predators do, and uh, this helps with depth perception, which allows her to see exactly how far away her prey is. So if we compare the eyes of our cats to the eyes of this goat, we can notice that the eyes are primarily on the sides of his head, and the pupils are horizontal. So this uh, helps uh, goats and other herbivorous animals, animals that, that uh, primarily eat plants, it helps them see all the way around them, as opposed to our cats, which primarily need to see what's right in front of them. 
that, that is going to conclude our critter catch for today, folks. Uh, what I want you to do now is go ahead and take out those pictures or those notes you took of all the critters that you found today. You're gonna write a little bit of a blurb about your animals that you found. Maybe tell me what you found, tell me what you named it, what it smelled like, what it looked like, what it felt like. Uh, and go ahead, once you finish that, post it in the comment section down below and you can read through and see what your classmates found out on their critter catches today. And that is all I've got for you today, explorers. Have a good day. Now I hear outdoors cool, so cool. And super glad you made it here. Here to learn about science and nature. And make a few friends out here. When you're on field study, getting good and muddy, holding belts and earning your beans, Jericho. If you don't think outdoor school's going to be so cool I'm here to tell you outdoor school's going to change you Just show up, just come out Make your student leaders proud Grab your boots, grab your coats Fill your water up, go before you go Aren't you the kids who want to learn all about fun guy? Though it took some time to arrive here, you'll find the roots are real fun guy. It's so cool already, seen some clones, it's scary, it's hardly school at all, Jericho.